to the southern establishment that lorded over its black citizens. Till's death at first had no impact. They considered his death as basically nothing. And you have to consider that in Mississippi and in the South in these days, the, the deaths of black Americans did not merit news. The possibility of a trial or a conviction was also a non-issue. Uh, the history of, of Mississippi, and I'd say in general in the South, was that no whites had ever been convicted for killing blacks. It is in that setting that he was killed with a degree of permission. But that is how grotesque, how sick the country was at that time. Within days of his death, Emmett Till's body was found at the bottom of the Tallahatchie River. It was wired to the 75-pound fan to keep it from floating up. When his remains were sent back to Chicago, his mother was torn apart with grief. But the wooden box that held his body had been nailed shut. There were instructions from the Mississippi coroner that under no circumstances was it to be unsealed. But this was Chicago, and Emmett's mother demanded to see her son one last time. After seeing what was left of her son, Mamie insisted on an open casket funeral. I wanted the world to look in and see. And so that's when I decided to let the world come in and see, because it was something that I could not handle alone. There were many people lynched uh, and assassinated, but something about the Emmett Till killing, maybe that something was the way people were able to see it all around the nation. America could no longer pretend that lynchings, the vigilante murders of blacks, were an acceptable or inevitable fact of life. In the post-Civil War era, there had been thousands of lynchings. Emmett Till's death underscored two points, that things had to change, but also that every blood spilled on the way. That picture of Emmett shows us the ugliness of racism. And because the world was able to see Emmett in that state, that brought on the, what we call the modern civil rights movement. The Southern newspaper said all the right things, that Till's murder was brutal and senseless, and that the people of Mississippi deplored this brutal act. And yet, when Roy Bryant and J.W. Millam were arrested and ordered to stand trial, some of those white Southerners who were shocked would find a way to take care of their own. In 1955, J.W. Millam and Roy Bryant were charged with the brutal slaying of Emmett Till in Money, Mississippi. As America pointed an accusing finger at the South, white Mississippians who'd previously decried the killing now circled their wagons. They raised $10,000 for the accused legal expenses, and five local lawyers volunteered to defend them. During their testimony, Millam and Bryant brazenly admitted to kidnapping and beating the boy. And yet, the all-white jury deliberated for just one hour and acquitted them of murder. In 1955, this was the way justice was meted out in the South. The white power structure of the South, in effect, endorsed their activities by not prosecuting them when they committed crimes, or if whites sat on juries, they'd simply nullify the evidence, uh, just, just end up with finding them not guilty. So they felt they had a license to kill. Sometime after the acquittal, Millam sold his story to Look Magazine. He admitted to an interviewer that he and Bryant had in fact shot Till in the head. But Emmett Till's death would not go down as just another lynching. People didn't forget it. It had a, just a galvanizing effect, particularly on the black population. Dr. King would often say honor and suffering is redemptive, and that's power and innocent blood. The innocent blood of Emmett Till exploded and hit the national consciousness in ways that was irreversible. 